If you have a million dollars, the fastest way to lose it is invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> Today, Bitcoin's at 35,000. Mm -hmm. That $1 million would be worth $65 million, okay? Okay. What do you say to Dave Ramsey today? <laughs> Charlie's still trashing and saying it's mm -hmm. garbage. Yeah, it's not. Are they wrong? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a limp. I mean, so so it's say it. Dave, Charlie, Warren, <laughs> and Jamie are idiots. Okay, guys. Hey, appreciate you guys being here. First of all, let me just tell you, I, I put in AI chat. I said, what do the Nigerian brothers uh -oh. and Grant Cardone have in common? And this is what it said to me. John and Pete are known for their expertise in options trading and appearances on financial te television, as well as for fo founding the market intelligence company, Trade Monster. Yeah. Is this mm -hmm. true? Yes, sir. It's true. <laughs> and the Nigerian family office. I didn't know you guys have a family office. Yeah, family okay. office. Okay. Grant Cardone, on the other hand, <laughs> is a sales trainer, motivational speaker, real estate investor, and author. Okay. Here's what John, Pete, and Grant have in common. Finance and investment, entrepreneurship, media presence. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Edu education and mentorship. I'm, I'm literally just did this. Authorship, public speaking, and wealth management. It's, Sounds like a lot. How accurate in chat <laughs> GPT? Oh, it's pretty damn I put it at about 100%. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm glad I didn't ask it a question about Israel or Palestine or Palestine. Gaza or Obama or, Obama Democrats or COVID. Or <laughs> hey, great to have you guys here. Great and, to be and, here. Uh, Thanks, uh, for you guys that are watching right now, John and Pete, um, behind the scenes, you're going to see us do some other stuff in the future together. This is super exciting for the everyday person. Uh, you you guys know and like these guys. These guys grew up very similar to me, right? Mm -hmm. You guys didn't grow up rich, did you? Or nope. No you, Wall Street babies. No, no, not no. at all. How, how'd y'all grow up? Physicians. Uh, our father is a transplant surgeon, probably one of the greatest ever of all time. Oh wow! And uh, transplanting what? Uh, kidneys, pancreas, liver, uh, eyelets, you name it, he did it. Wow. He thought heart was too easy, so he just stopped doing hearts because everybody always thinks that's the biggest of them all. And my dad said, right. No, 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 the liver's tough. Uh -huh. Hearts, he could, he could do with his eyes closed. So uh, very confident guy, and that's what you want when you when you have a doctor, right? When 100%. a doctor's working on you, trying to get you back into the way you, the world you want, yeah, you want confidence. And, yeah. and our dad never lacked. And confidence. not a nerd. <laughs> is, is your dad still around? No, nope. he okay. passed two years ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, Ninety three. Oh wow, um, good. But he uh, um, he was one of those guys, gregarious. You know, he was a pro football player. Okay. He was 6'4", 270 pounds. Uh -huh. 285. When he passed, he was probably <laughs> Hopefully good looking, 225. Good looking guy. He's a handsome uh, dude, man. He was a handsome Big dude. Armenian <laughs> guy, man. <laughs> what happened to y'all? <laughs> we <laughs> didn't get that side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> um, <laughs> he looks just like him. I do. I, I uh, actually yeah. look a lot like, a, like our father. Yeah, okay. he, he and I were closest because I was born on the same day, same hospital wow. in San Francisco. Is he was a few born. years apart. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'll tell you the other thing about our father that I'm so proud of is he was a scientist, not just mm -hmm. a doctor, but a scientist. Uh -huh. He came up with immunosuppressant drugs that were used for oh, the better part of maybe 60 years in medicine because of what he had come up with. And he worked with a guy in Berkeley who basically uh, was the guy who discovered the last six or eight elements of the periodic table. So, wow, uh, you know, dude. my dad, my dad was that in the midst of whack, uh, a lot of intelligent people. Yeah, he's a Cal Berkeley guy. He, yeah. he graduated in two and a half years, played in the Rose Bowl. While he was already in med school, I mean, the guy, uh, uh -huh. you want to be off the charts and smart, that that was the guy. Yeah. And then both of you guys ended up playing in the NFL as we well, did. right? We did. Yeah. So I why, played why? four games. <laughs> uh -huh. four because more than, single more than I played. Uh, you know, you would have been a good defensive back. You think that's uh, what I would have been? Well, uh, I see I, you as a wide even, receiver. Even like a like wide a, receiver. Like a jacked yeah. wide receiber. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank you. yeah Edelman. <laughs> yeah, like Edelman. But I'm a little <laughs> short, dude. I'm... Edelman's Edelman, not, yeah. not six yeah. feet something. But... Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, but um, so I played four games. Singletary held out on his contract. But it got me to Chicago. Well, what, what does that have to do with it? What is Singletary holding out having to do with it? <laughs> well, because I, I, I don't get the Mike Singletary <laughs> didn't count under the uh, fifty-player limit at that time uh -huh. because he didn't sign his contract. So while he was negotiating with the Bears, they extended out the time before he'd have to count under the fifty-man roster. Okay. So I got to play four games while he was holding out. Oh God. Then God. once he uh, signed his. By the time that pen touched the paper, yeah. I was gone. You were <laughs> yeah. Bang. Yeah. Bang. 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 Where did bang come from? 
<laughs> um, I just kind of ran across it. If oh, you guys what? don't know, he does. No, a, no. What's That's your show? Cool. Uh, three, three at three? Three at three. Okay. Yep. We'll be talking about three at three, by the way. I'm going to, everybody that wants to just uh, put a comment below and I'm going to get you signed up for free. We didn't even talk about for this. For free. For free. Uh, at three. Three at three. Three at three for, for free. free. For yeah, free. Not so bad. There okay. you go. <laughs> um, so, so any of you that, that you appreciate kind of some of the con content that we share here, and we we'll hope to give you some great stuff here, we'll get you signed up for that. So yeah. where did Bang come from? Bang came from when you'd make money trading. Bang. So you're in a pit. You hit with, it. Yeah, with uh, 50 or 70 people who yeah. hit your guts. Yeah. Because you Come just came yeah. into the pit. Uh -huh. You're going to take money or food off the table. They think, they think because you got a deal. It yeah. took something So, from <laughs> you know, you have to fight. Is I that mean, really true, though? Like, oh, yeah. if me and him do a deal, it took a deal from you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How's that? <laughs> He's well, out, man. Because the way it <laughs> why, worked. Why is that? <laughs> well, the broker would come into the pit, and he or she would say that they wanted to buy, I want to buy these in 10x trading. Uh -huh. And they'd say, give me a market. And we'd both bark out, you know, half three quarters. And he'd say, buy them. And you'd say, sold. Whoever says sold first gets the trade. Uh -huh. Then there's uh -huh. second, third, fourth, fifth. So, And then when you get it, you'd be like, bang. Yeah, you just <laughs> bang. And that pisses them off. Uh -huh. And it works on them mentally. Yeah, yeah. Because the more you tell them you're winning, the more they think, well, I must be losing if he's winning. <laughs> so uh -huh. it's one of those things that perpetuates. But yeah. it's also because I think trading is a lot like applause when you're on the football field or basketball court, hockey yeah, arena, yeah. whatever. When you hit it, when you make money on a trade, and we're making literally a thousand trades a day, back in those days, not yeah. now, but back in those days could be 150 to a thousand trades a day. If I'm making 200 bucks or a thousand bucks a trade, you get the idea that yeah. I can make six figures in a day. 200 grand. Trading. Uh -huh. yeah. wow. And so that's pissing ever, the guy you, next to me off. Have you guys ever had a $200,000 day? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. What's your biggest day? Positive and negative. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Just so you know. What's your biggest day ever? Um, biggest single Biggest trading loss day or, or winning biggest day? Winning day. <laughs> Let's do the biggest winning day. Biggest win day, uh, seven figures. For sure. So how many, how many seven figures? There's a lot. <laughs> some, some good numbers. Not eight, but seven. You know, some, some yeah, really nine some million dollars? Yeah, stuff like that. What's yeah. your biggest? Um, it would be less. Pete traded bigger than I traded. Okay. But he's got a um, I mean, bigger brother. This well, guy, when he bigger was. Bigger sack, bigger ball sack. No. <laughs> bigger something. Less, less. Big gloves, big feet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but Grant, when, when he was in the AOL pit, uh -huh. he would routinely carry $100 million worth of stock. Dude, every freaking day. And so that would be something that, and we t tell people this all the time, you get blinders on if you get outside of your comfort zone. Uh -huh. You gotta trade within your comfort zone. Mine was a lot less than that, but Pia yeah. could have a hundred million but, dollars worth of AOL. So, so, but you weren't comfortable with that. I like, like, was comfortable I was for comfortable a few minutes. It. Yeah, I was pretty comfortable with uh -huh. it. Yeah, yeah I was, I was, it was fun. Yeah. You know, I came from. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean to carry a hundred million dollars worth of stock? I don't. I don't. Explain that to me and the audiences, though we know. Nothing. Sure. Well, there's uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. A lot of it has to do with the hedging and things that are going on as well, we're what do you trading. Carry? How, how, what does it mean to carry a hundred million? That, that's how much stock I've I've got. That, yeah. That's what I'm carrying. It's what I have. That You're at long that moment bought, you own you bought it. hundred million, or you yeah. sold or it. sold. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, and it's against other positions that I've got on uh -huh. in the options world, which is complicated, so I don't want to go too deep into that. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of it is hedging, and some of it is just leaning a certain way based upon what you're seeing coming uh -huh. in. If, but but if, you, you, you're not investing $100 million oh, on trade. Here, here's the best part. <laughs> this but is the best have, part. But do you have, let's say this is $100 million. Yeah. Okay. Do you have $100 million of your own money at risk on any given day? Leveraged. Uh, leveraged. <laughs> yeah, even because worse. of this. <laughs> If right. you're a market maker, Grant, um, so like if you want to buy $100 million worth of Apple today, yeah, yeah, yeah. you'd have to put up $50 million. Your brokerage would 50%. put up the other half, uh -huh. 50%. And how much would I need at the brokerage? What's that? How much would I need at the brokerage? $50 million. You'd have to have at least $50 million at the brokerage. Then uh -huh. Goldman or TD Ameritrade, Schwab would put up the other 50 for you um, if you're a good risk. Yeah, yeah. Now, on the other hand, if you're a market maker, you have zero reg T, they call it. Regulation T is how much money you have to put up for every position you put on. So we had no reg T, uh -huh. zero. So in other words, Pete could make a million dollars, trade like a hundred million. So literally, he might have a hundred million dollars worth of AOL in his account, and he's got calls and puts against it. 
Uh -huh. um, they will charge him interest on $99 million every day. <laughs> Well, so he's got to trade enough to make up the interest on the $99 dude, million. Uh, or if he's but, sold it, he's getting the interest himself right? on $99 million. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's good days and bad days. Worst day. really I want to get, I get <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, right? <laughs> What's the worst day you ever had? Oh, that's a really good question. That was seven figures. That was a. That what was does seven ugly. figures mean? Well, in that, in that particular case, that, it was probably in the millions, a couple million uh -huh. bucks. And it literally happened in 10 minutes. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the that's the pain side of the yeah, trade. Yeah, yeah. Being now, in, being on the trading what, floor. What time of the day did it happen? Oh, it was probably like eleven o'clock in the morning, uh -huh. Chicago time at the time. You remember uh, where you were? Oh yeah, I remember, remember the whole the trade. trade I remember everything. I can't tell you some of the details on yeah, the trade, other than the. I mean, not. Uh, it's just to protect myself yeah. because I said thanks to the person on the other side of the trade that <laughs> I'd probably not want out there. But, right, right, um, right. But it was you know he ripped me off. He stole money from me. Is what uh -huh. happened. This uh -huh. guy literally was. A trader from New York Dude, who guy. knew what was going on in the market knew what he had. He was an insider, insider information, insider. Yeah, 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 and stole. He a million you, he set you up million plus dollars. He from knew me. you were going to lose a couple uh -huh. million. Dollars. Absolutely knew because uh -huh. he had control over it. Yeah. He had control over the whole trade. I couldn't sell now, it. There's something that they used to call, uh, you know, when when we were trading, where you you had to have what they called an uptick on the stock. And I don't want to get too complex, but. This guy had control of whether or not there was an uptick, and I couldn't sell it because there wasn't an uptick in the stock. It just kept dropping like this, uh -huh. and I needed to sell uh -huh. millions of dollars worth of shares against this trade, and I just watched it go down, 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 yeah, down, down, down. because you had a margin call? You had time on No, your, it, was, it was just so I, I needed to hedge the trade that I had done, uh -huh. and he was in control of the other side of the right. hedge. Now, how much <laughs> of the market is controlled in some manner, shape, or form, and being manipulated. <sighs> Boy, John, you might well, have um, I mean, Every just... <laughs> day right now, there are sites on the internet that say how much Congress is trading. I mean, Nancy uh -huh. Pelosi, she makes 215,000 bucks a year. She's worth $130 million. Yeah, yeah. how does that how happen? How does that work? You and I can do the math. Mathematically impossible. Right, <laughs> mathematically. But... She would have to live, I did the math on it. <laughs> she would have had to been born before Alexander the Great. Yeah. <laughs> She'd had to be been around 3,000 years mm -hmm. Wow! in order for that money to have grown. To that but point. on the other hand, if you know that you're going to deny a uh, drilling permit for Exxon uh -huh. in a certain area of the country, and you you're, the you're on that committee, or you have found out from other congressional right, people, right. you could short that stock. Right, right. Exxon knowing it's going to go down. Shorting knowing it's going to go down. And her husband does this all the time. Uh -huh. Her husband, Paul Pelosi, is the one that does the trades. Now, Nancy doesn't do them, but they have to report them because right. as a family, you have to report if you're long or short. Right. Okay, since you know the Pelosi's, <laughs> clearly. Clearly. Is it true <laughs> that that was his boyfriend in the house? That part I don't know. But it certainly I seems you had, I'm glad he didn't answer that one. Yeah. I thought you had the intimate details. The no, process. no. Okay. But I tell you, did that story make sense to anybody else? That some guy breaks in uh, to it to the house. Uh, they never found which window he came through allegedly on the second floor, but they find him in there in his underwear with Paul Pelosi. And his, I mean, again, I just say there are certain things that are a little suspicious about well, the story. Well, what's suspicious enough is how do you make a hunt 200 grand a year and end up with $130 million? So I yeah. think all you guys that are watching right now, like in comments, just throw, how do you make sense that Congress can trade? I cannot do insider trading, right? No, you right? get taken out in cost. How many years would I spend doing that if mm -hmm. I knew about Exxon? Between and seven and 20 years. Yeah, what did know? Martha get? Uh, Martha got, uh, I think, that six years, Two, uh, and they gave her one day off for every day she served. So I think she spent less than three. Uh huh. Yeah. But still, I mean, and that's for, friends for, with a, for a two thousand <laughs> no, share trade, yeah. Yeah. it wasn't hundreds of thousands of shares. Yeah. It was a couple thousand shares. Yeah. How many times? Uh, but the deal is, uh, under Obama, Congress did pass because it got on sixty minutes and people got upset. Uh -huh. So Congress passed a rule that they couldn't do insider trading, and the president was ready to sign it, and then they changed it. Congress uh -huh. changed it. They just wanted the headline grant right, to right. make you think that it's a fair deal. Right. But there are bad people that do insider trading. There are Congress people that do insider trading. We could argue about how bad they yeah. are. And it's both Republicans yeah. and Democrats. But there's a lot of information that people know. That's what we follow with unusual uh, activity. Mm -hmm. Unusual activity is what? Volume? Yep. Uh, Buying of and knowing if it's bought or sold. But yes, it, uh, it's volume. Is it size? Is it something significant? So what's your biggest 
what's one of your biggest hints? Like historically, you look back and you say, "Do we saw something happening? Oh, Un- unusual activity." Well, yeah. what's give me an I'll, unusual I'll activity? Two out to you. <laughs> okay, the first one will outrage you. Okay. The first I, I like one being outraged. is You're gonna outrage 2001. Then that break, break my glass though. Oh. Okay. <laughs> in 2001, somebody came in on Thursday and Friday uh, before Dude. expiration to buy a lot of puts in American Airlines and United Airlines. Puts is it going up? Uh, put is a, an insurance policy uh, okay. uh, that it, protects it, against going down oh, or to make you money okay. when it's going down. 2001. What happens? Somebody flies American Airlines and United Airlines into the Trade Center. Trade Center. World yeah. Trade Center. Only those what, two. What day was this? What day was this? Uh, September. Uh, that was September 11th. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, but they came in to buy them on the 7th and 8th. Uh-huh. And we, we so, saw So, let it. me understand. They bought a put. So Which some is guy, the right to sell. So, you see some... Unusual activity. 10 times normal activity. The right the, to sell. Yeah. So what did they put up? A penny or 10 cents? or uh, they, they paid so about $2 and it went to, I think, $20 or more. So $2 oh. to 20. In other words, 10x. So they have the right. Um, they have the right. They have the right to sell it at 30 sell bucks it. a share, both American and United. And both of them opened after the market reopened after uh, 9-11. We uh, closed for a week. Uh-huh. When the market reopened, we were already giving our data to the FBI uh-huh. um, because of the unusual activity. Yeah. Because we said somebody knew. Okay, now because they only bought these is? two. No, I, I, how does, I know. How does the FBI know? knows? Yeah, because every trade in the United get, States. Anybody get uh, uh, put in handcuffs? Well, we don't know. We know that they could follow the money though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because yeah. All those trades clear at a clearing firm. Uh, was it an American? Then, was it a Saudi? Was it? It was uh, people in Hamburg, Germany that placed the trades. And that's where the terrorists were based prior to coming to the United States. Wow. So did you make money on that trade? No, no, no. Did you? Part. No, uh, we you didn't follow make, the trade. No, no we, we didn't fo- see it back yeah. then. We, uh, okay. We, okay. We saw what's what's one the, you've seen? Um, let's see. And what, I mean, can you calculate I, what this guy made? What, what this guy could have made on that, that guy trade? in Hamburg, guy, guy or gal, probably whoever supported the terrorists back then, um, probably 30 to $40 million on uh-huh. the trade. Um, another dude, one. That doesn't seem like a lot of money. Well, like if you knew that, why not make a billion dollars? You could. Yeah. You could have. Uh, I mean, they so didn't think instance, big enough. Probably. Casino Royale with uh, the the first movie with Daniel Craig, the first Bond uh-huh, movie uh-huh. with Daniel Craig. He, uh, they wrote into the script basically that they wrote into the script that somebody was buying a lot of puts on an airline that was going to get oh, blown wow. up wow. on the runway uh-huh. and then destroy this. Uh, a uh, prototype. Uh-huh. And so what happened? James Bond stopped it from blowing up and the guy lost all his money on the puts. He would have made- Was that after the uh, 9-11? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is Casino just yeah, yeah, okay. 10, 10 okay. 11 years. <laughs> I got a good one for yeah, you. Give me. Unusual and, activity. And, or John probably was going to this one next, but I'll jump in here because it, I had just started at C, uh, CNBC doing uh, a show and we were a couple months into it and they were asking me some questions. And I said, well, I said, I'm seeing some really- unbelievable, unusual activity. And I'm not sure, do we want to even talk about this? Wow. And uh, they said, yeah, we want to talk about it. I said, all right. So I went on. Before the show, during the show? That was before the show. It was that that show was in the evening and there was a trade during the day, Uh but it it sort of spooked me a little bit because somebody was uh, looking out and buying some puts in Bear Stearns. Now, Bear Stearns at that time- 2000 what? What was this? 2007? 2007. Oh, my God. So Bear Stearns is trading 67 bucks a share. Uh, the CEO absolutely confirms everything is fine. There's no real big deals out there. I've, all that kind of thing, right? I mean, everything's everything's just hunky-dory. It's all good. Well, I'm seeing all these puts being bought, but they're not buying something uh, that makes any sense at all, Grant, because the reality is you wouldn't go way out of the money. In other, in other words, stocks trading 68, they're buying the 30 puts, Okay doesn't make any sense because look how far it has to drop before these actually right, kick right. in. But they bought maybe 35,000 of them for about 30 cents. And I said, God, this is a head scratcher because this is kind of scary to me. I don't know what the heck these guys are thinking, uh-huh. but they think something really bad is going to happen. Typically, you would buy one with a $1 or $2 variation. You might not buy it something yeah. at the money. Yeah. So like, right, right. if it's at 68, maybe you're buying the 65 puts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, something this is like, like making yeah. a bet on Black 7. Yeah, yeah. it's right? like Armageddon, yeah. the right. end of the world kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah. But lo and behold, 
all of a sudden, the next thing you know, we well, have, and this is kind of the kickoff of the financial crisis. Before anybody talk, everybody always goes back and they go, well, it all kicked off with uh, Lehman Brothers, right? right? Which is September, October, whatever. Uh -huh. This was way back in March. I, I remember wow. like it was yesterday. You know, March 30 puts, they pay 30 cents for them or whatever it was. Very, very close to 30 cents. And within days, this stock is now trading all the way down to like five bucks. And oh then it goes all the God. way before Jamie Dimon and them took over. What was it? Down to almost zero. Uh, and it was, uh -huh. yeah. And yeah. They, they, out of the goodness of their heart, they at first were going to pay two bucks a share for it. <laughs> yeah. He ended up uh, ten? paying it out for 10. 10. Yeah. But still, how puts, much money what, do you think those puts were worth? Well, they went from 30 cents to almost, thir almost $30. So you're talking 100x. Yes. Yeah. So they, this is real. It's 35,000 shares. Yeah. So how much money would that be? No, no, 3.5 million <laughs> shares. 35,000 options. Oh, every so option. You're talking about 100 option. shares. Yeah. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 They that made, was a scary one. So why and they did the same thing in General Motors. Yeah. They bought way before, out of the money. Before place. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Before when they before knew the funding was crisis. coming. Right. Well, because they knew General Motors was you know underwater. They were over leverage. They did it in the financials uh, as far as uh, real estate brokerages. Uh -huh. They did it in the mortgage companies. They did it wow. everywhere. Wow. So yeah. so now today, when you look today, where, where do the everyday people go to look for unusual activity? Our site. Us. Uh -huh. Market Rebellion. <laughs> okay. That's an easy 10X answer. Rebellion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, want you, I want to know, you guys, you guys like 10X trading or you like 10X trading rebellion? What do you like better? Well... We'll have to see which one's 10x type trading. In. Let's just do a little survey. Yeah. 10x trading. To me, like it's like you one words are always stronger, right? Yeah. Because Apple, um, Google, yeah. it's not Yahoo. Yeah, it's one Amazon. word. It's yeah. you know, <laughs> Wells Fargo, it's one word, really. <laughs> Wait a minute, he just he's, as, he's as bad as the president. The <laughs> president said, I got one word, made in America. That's a phrase. Made in America is one word, dude. Come on, let's do it. Okay, it's a flag, dude. I get, I get an image of a flag. Okay, so like, where do I go? Where do people go other than your, like, how would I find some unusual activity today? What, mm. what would you do? What are the steps to grant We don't it? even see it, by the way, Grant, because um, it, when I started trading in 1981 on the floor after being with the Bears, um, we were seeing about four games. Before, before <laughs> game, 400,000 uh, options traded every day. Uh -huh. um, when Pete started, it was almost a million a day in 93. Uh -huh. um, today? Today, 45 million Shares a day. Shares a day. Options Trade. per day. App yeah. Options. Yep. Yeah, options. Okay. And that represents... You know, billions, you know, almost trillions of dollars. So you're saying day. now you can't see the unusual it, activity? It, it happens it's so, so fast. fast. Uh, it's uh -huh. almost the speed of light. Uh -huh. They trade 8 million quotes per second uh -huh. on the floor. Uh -huh. Because it doesn't really trade so on the floor. So you guys don't report in the data data center. activity anymore? We oh, do. Yeah, we do. Because oh, we yeah. have computers yeah. in the data centers. Okay. Um, that are picking up every single click. So you're saying the everyday person has Can't no access to this data? None. No, they have no, no, no okay. chance. So at what layer, let's say there's 330 million people in America, mm -hmm. what tier of those people have access to this data? <laughs> you know, it's a fractions really, of fractions yeah. of fractions of 1%. Yeah. yeah. You're talking I mean, about... Very so the 1% of... Uh, not, not even, we're not talking about that. Right. No, we're not talking about rich people. No. You're talking about institutions... Yep. That are controlling algorithms. Yeah, they, they trade. I mean, you know, whether it's Flash Boys by Michael Lewis, great book, uh -huh. um, or whether it's The Big Short, all of these things, they trade so fast, the human eye can't see it. Uh -huh. And then you don't know were they buying them or were they selling them. You yeah. just see volume. So the important thing that we can define for people is that we can tell you if it was bought. And then the direction, is it going to be bullish or bearish? Uh -huh. Bullish to the upside, bearish yeah. to the downside. How often are you right? About 80% of the time. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It's pretty consistent. Yeah. But, but you know, it, it, it is a difficult thing, the whole process. I mean, John brought up the word algorithms, the, the algorithmic trading. We traded 58 million option contracts just this past week in one day. So when you think about it like that, we're averaging 45 million, but you know, every once in a while it dips a little bit right, and right. sometimes a little right, bit higher. Right. But that's all algorithmic trading. There's uh -huh. no humans making those kinds of trades. Right, this right, is, right, this right. is based upon, hey, the 10-year yield is here now. We're going to do this. Yeah, we're yeah, going to buy yeah. this. We're going to sell these. Yeah. We're going to do all these things. And it's all just bang, bang, bang. But you can't even see it. Yeah, and uh -huh. AI makes it even scarier. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because the artificial intelligence learns 
from the data that it gets. If you're giving that artificial yeah. intelligence good data, it's going to be able to find patterns where you and I can't find them. Yeah. So yeah. It, to me, if you guys like, this is why I don't touch this space. <laughs> this is why I'm like, Fuck, I ain't doing this shit. <laughs> like, like this is this is this is casino on like times a billion. Yeah. Like when you tell me 0.001 percent of the public can even like even knows about this data. Mm -hmm. How does the everyday person feel good about even being in the stock market? I'll tell you how. Um, if you're buying stock alone, yeah. you're in trouble. That's why our new book is called It's Not an Option, because it's not an option to just trade stock. Uh -huh. If you trade an option, however, you are defining your risk when you go into the trade. If you bought, for instance, Grant, I'll use Apple again. If Apple's trading at $177 a share and you buy 10,000 shares of Apple, that's a lot of money. Yeah. You know, yeah. because every thousand shares is $177,000. Uh -huh. So you're putting $1.7 million of your money at risk. Now, it's not going to go to zero overnight because, of course. Bear Stearns did. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's not Bear Stearns. Lehman did. Yeah. <laughs> These guys have But there was a time when Lehman was Apple. Right. Bear Stearns was Apple. Like the, most of the audience didn't know enough. 100 years ago, dude, these were the biggest freaking names in the world. Yeah. They were gold standard. Yeah. And there's yeah. a bunch of them that are gone, like uh -huh. E.F. Hutton yeah. or Shearson and Lehman yeah, and yeah. all that, yeah. Bear Stearns. But um, if you're somebody who's putting 1.7 million, that'd be a small trade for Grant. No, no. Uh, in, in the market. <laughs> It'll be a trade I'll never make. <laughs> in stock. Um, <laughs> That'd be a massive trade. Come on. If that <laughs> stock <laughs> opened, let's say Tim Cook or somebody on the board did something bad. Yeah, yeah. And the stock drops $10. Yeah. You just lost $10 times 10,000 shares. You just lost 100 grand. Right, right. Like that. Rather than 1.7 Right. Million. You only lost... A hundred grand. Right, right. But if you bought an option uh -huh. and you spent oh, five thousand dollars on the yeah. option, that's all you can lose is right, the five thousand. Right, right, right. And if you're right, right, you're getting leveraged returns uh -huh. to the direction that you're playing. Mm -hmm. So that's what Pete and I teach people is you should use options to define your risk and to get good leverage, not the bad leverage that uh -huh. people that only trade stock have. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you can't still trade stock. Mm -hmm. You can trade around the stock with the options. And I, I don't want to get it too yeah, complex. Yeah, man, but, you guys, you guys know. But there a are whole ways that you know. Y'all know a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> you man. can create things. You can actually buy protection against your stock. You can also sell something to give yourself yeah, a way so, to get a stream of money. So right. there's a lot of things you can do. So Pete, when you see me buy a piece of real estate, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Big giant building. Yep. And I'm like, what do y'all think? I'm just a coward. No, and I sit there and wait for ten or fifteen years of rent. Why, why did I invest and with you? I think you're brilliant. I mean, I I, I gave my wife a hundred thousand dollars of one of his buildings. gave gave it uh -huh. to you. Uh, you've been paying her monthly returns on that money. Mm -hmm. So I love that. She yeah, loves yeah. that because she knows what I do is substantially more risky. Uh -huh. When you're buying a building for one hundred and seventy five mil and you're operating it at 93% occupancy for those renters and so forth. And with interest rates where we are, a lot more people are gonna be renters for longer. Uh -huh. That's pretty damn safe. Yeah. Um, me trading the way I do right, right, is right. very safe Dude. also. I don't know how y'all do this every day. It's a leveraged <laughs> return. Yours is, you're putting 175 mil I gotta make in. one decision one time, sit and wait. And just wait. Wait five, but that's six a good years. Wait. That's a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you at least have, you understand the risks and everything yeah, that yeah, you've got yeah. on. And there's just still like, risk there. Yeah. yeah. There's, sure. a, there's so, risk in so everything. So tell me why, because I'm in that market, right? We're not even using debt today because of the 10-year. Yeah. And because of what the Fed's done, which I think is completely exploiting the American people. Oh, yeah. The everyday yeah. middle They're class They're going to drive family. it into a recession. Uh, the yeah. Fed. If if Jay Powell Again. stays on it, the, yeah. the I, I think the I'll just tell you, I think Jerome Powell is an extension of the Fauci program mm. to shut America down. Mm. When Fauci ended, Jerome stepped in. They look similar. <laughs> they act similar. They both talk about I the thing that's, about it like they that. both talk about something that's invisible. COVID was invisible. Inflation's invisible. I think we're so far past the inflation thing. Personally, when I look at shelter, mm -hmm. uh, rents, home prices, mortgages, uh, even fuel prices, like. Yeah. Uh, if fuel prices were so expensive, everybody would turn electricity off. Anywhere you go, electricity is being run. Mm -hmm. So it must not be that expensive because if you cranked it up 10 times, everybody start turning the lights off like mm -hmm. when we grew up. Yep. Yep. I get beat if I left the lights on. Yep. So my question to you is, why did the banks, 11 raises, 
Okay, the fastest race in the history of this country. Yeah. Why have Treasury bill r- rates gone up, but my savings account or checking account still only pay me a quarter or a half percent for most people? Yep. Well, that's because those banksters, as many people call them, <laughs> aren't sharing that wealth with you. Yeah. Well, They're making a lot more money because mortgages went to eight, yeah, but my yeah. checking account's paying me maybe a half. Mm-hmm. So that There's sounds no, like there, very few people are getting five percent from right. a treasury bill. Right. Sounds like seven and a half percent scalp there to me. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. pretty good scalp. They ought to be making pretty good money. And they are. <laughs> but are they? Are the, are the banks safe right now? I think the banks are more at risk right safe, now than ever. No, but are they uh-huh. making money? Yes. Uh-huh. They're they're definitely not safe. I mean, there's there are a lot of issues that they're they're uh-huh. facing to this day. Though them and the credit card companies and everything. When we talk about debt. Mm-hmm. All the time, we, we you know, when student you look loan at debt. student loan debt, you, know, you got a trillion dollars in credit card debt. I mean, there's there's a lot of things out there that yeah. I think should scare people. Yeah, like what? At this point. Give, give me well, that being one of them. Student is, debt. Yeah. A, a one point seven trillion. Well, yeah. and credit they got that. Debt. The, the worst part, Grant, is that they there was a study done at Harvard. I'll make it real quick. But there was a study done at Harvard. This guy took a bunch of rats. Put them in the pool. Uh-huh. Let them swim. Uh-huh. <laughs> On average, the rats were exhausted and starting to drown in 15 minutes. Okay, he didn't let them drown. He pulls them out of the pool, uh-huh. gives them some food, wipes them down, makes them feel good, and things like that, uh-huh. and puts them back in the pool. Take a wild guess. That's how my wife treats me. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, keep I know I knew this was going back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so, how long do you think they swim the second time? And I've, seven I've, minutes. No nope. less time. Nope. Three more. They Two swim long. days. Two days. Why, dude? Because now they know. I don't get it. I don't get it. Because now it's ingrained in them that somebody's going to save me. Uh-huh. The first time around, they, they get tired and they start cramping up and they go, oh, I don't know. Oh, and they give up. Uh-huh. They don't give up the second time. The uh-huh. second time, they're always thinking Grant's going to come pick me up and pluck me out of the pool. Right. Well, the same thing happens with the Fed, with lending money and all this uh-huh. kind of stuff. Uh-huh. You know, 2008, people got their homes taken away and all that kind of stuff. This time, you think anybody's worried about it because they're like, well, my neighbor had five homes and he filed for bankruptcy and now he's right back and now he's got, you know, three yeah, jet skis yeah, yeah, and yeah. a boat. And yeah, yeah. Not, not a yeah. 10X jet, but he's got <laughs> flying around in a Cessna. Yeah, or yeah, whatever. yeah, 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 like, yeah. It wasn't the end of the world. Somebody's going to step in and save them. Uh-huh. So they'll continue to take more risk is my analogy uh-huh, to the rats. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The rats kind of took me off. <laughs> they kind of took me off. But, but, but so let's get back. So, so why? <laughs> the rats. Why, why? Because if I was the rat and you saved me in 15 minutes, yeah. the next time you put me in, I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to quit in two. <laughs> this, this guy's going to wipe me off and give me a hug. I'm not going to why, why Why wait for two days? <laughs> Okay, but so I didn't quite make the connection. All right, I'll, I'll have brother, to give you the study. Your brother, your brother smoking weed on the weekends or something. He's doing something. I don't know something what it, weird, It's dude. Puerto Rico, man. It's I Puerto mean. Rico, bro. Okay, and we're going to talk about Puerto Rico. But okay. so, so why are the banks, like, you say they're not safe, okay? There's three bank failures in the last year. Uh-huh. One being the biggest bank failure in the history of this country. Mm-hmm. Everybody in America's forgot about it. The headlines forgot about it. Sure. CNBC doesn't talk about it. Mm-hmm. In my lifetime, 65 years, there's never been three bank failures without 300 following. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Never. There's never been ever in any decade, uh, 95, 2000, uh, except for this one, mm-hmm. has only three banks failed. Will more banks fail? Well, and why, you why have not more failed? Here's, here's why those fail. Uh-huh. Uh, for the most part, it was mismatched maturities. So meaning that the banks got all this money in because people were given free money Mm -hmm. um, during COVID. None of us asked for it. We all want it. But they just threw money at people. A lot of that money went into um, First Republic, which is one of those big failures. Silvergate and Silicon Valley Bank. All those three. Um, They're all out in California. Surprise, surprise. So anyway, (laughs) what did those bankers do with the money they got? Well, first of all, they, they played the uh, um, equality cards. They had people that weren't qualified to be in the positions they were in because socially it was more acceptable to have them as an investment officer of the bank and so forth. Because they said, well, no bank's going to fail. We're like those rats. 
If we start to fail, they'll, <laughs> they'll, pick, back pick, to us, the they'll <laughs> pick us back up out of the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Forget about that Cardone rat over there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Keith yeah. just wanted to get rum. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But so what, what happened then was they invested in treasuries. Like one, two, this five This is the year. mix smacked maturities. Okay, yep. so they went so and now, bought a five-year. Uh, they bought a five-year treasury, and they don't that, have that to pay in two percent. Right now, what happens yeah. when that five-year goes to four percent, which uh, yeah. it did yeah. in March? So it goes to four now. Yeah, so which means the value money. of those went down because right. they go in the opposite direction of right. bonds. Right. When bonds are going but down, every bank in the country did this. Every up. bank, not just uh, these three, but, bro. They all did it. But these were three California banks that are the um, most politically correct. I have two billion dollars worth of loans. Yeah. Okay. Okay. These guys went and sold these. Thirty-seven of my my loans are ten-year terms. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's 37 loans I know of personally that are 10 years. Some of them locked at three. Mm -hmm. That money would cost six today, seven. Yeah, yeah easy. Maybe even closer. Higher. So when these three banks went down, mm -hmm. they rewrite in the law, keep them at, keep all assets, all the treasury bills at market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because these, and that's not the market. The, 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 that's not the value of those treasury bills, nope. right? You agree they all came down 40 or 50%. Right. Keep in mind- Every during, bank in the country. There's no, bank, March, there's no bank, you agree, there's no bank that has not participated in what you just described as the mix match maturities. Yep, there's no bank that hasn't, but it's way. how much do you keep on hand? Uh -huh. Because the problem was, Grant, those losses that they were taking were on paper. There, as Buffett says, it's not a loss until you take it. Right, right. Meaning he's been in <clears throat> Exxon Mobil before, and he's sucked hind tit on that, and it went down. Uh -huh. Warren Buffett, one of the best investors in the world, has twice lost a lot of money in in energy plays. Uh -huh. Why? Um, he picked the wrong time. He got in. His timing wasn't as good. Blah blah blah. But he, it wasn't a loss until he sold. It's uh -huh. only a loss on paper until yeah. you sell. Mm -hmm. So with those banks- Did he all when, end up losing a lot of money in the energy play? Yes, uh -huh. in both. So, so why is now he, he's making why a is lot he loading of, up on Oxy? Oxy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Occidental Petroleum, not yeah. Oxycontin. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So when he's uh, in here buying uh -huh. uh, those bonds, um, Warren doesn't have to worry the way a bank does on a run. Mm -hmm. Meaning that all of a sudden Grant Cardone comes and says, I want my 20 million bucks. I right. want it and now. my deposits. And, and the bank right. says, we can't give it to you right now, Mr. Cardone. Right, You're right, like, you right. better damn have it tomorrow. Uh -huh. It's my money or I'm reporting you to the Fed and so forth. Uh -huh. So all of a sudden, a line starts forming around the bank, right, of all uh -huh. these people uh -huh. who want their money. They've got to start selling those treasuries. Now, just like with Buffett, they have to take the loss because they started selling. Uh -huh. they, they're selling those treasuries. They have to take that mark. Now they don't have enough money to operate the bank. Yeah. So the government comes in over the weekend, shuts them down. Yeah. Like Pete said, there are most of the rest of them, like um, everybody from Jamie Diamond at uh, uh, J.P. Morgan to uh, uh, any bank that you would use, you know, Fifth Third, whatever. They have massive amounts of free cash because they don't want the run on them. Uh -huh. But these banks were greedy in California and mismanaged. And that's why they lost. Yep. You think? Yes. There's only three no. roaches. Well, there's in more the roaches out there. It's just a matter of when and 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 if. Uh -huh. If the circumstances get bad enough, like John said, it becomes a situation where they do get bad enough, uh -huh. and that's that's when it you know well, starts so to hit. So why change the rules, Pete? To to hey, you don't have to write your. You can leave all your assets at market. Yep. Until you sell one. Until you sell it. Until you sell it. As soon as you uh -huh. take that mark. That becomes the new mark, meaning oh, that oh, um, okay. all of a sudden that. all your returns are at two percent, and you're like, "Well, I'm, well, you they're know, just going to take them out to maturity, then, right?" Yeah. So but then, then if you years. sell that one, yeah. and now it's at four percent, you got to take the loss, the difference right, right, between right, those right, two, yeah, right? And that's what crushed them. Was so it? you you think you think banks are not risky right now? No, I think they're <laughs> I not. Say that. I'm saying they're <laughs> not as risky <laughs> as they were in 2008 for this reason. All of those mortgages eventually end up with banks or the uh -huh. Fed. Um, but people don't have as many adjustables now, Grant. Yeah. Just like you, yeah. they went for fixed because when <laughs> well, mortgages well, well, went below three- You're talking about residential. Yeah. There is so much- Commercial is where the money. risks are. That's the real risk. Commercial right. or okay. risks. 
the greedy guys, just like the greedy banks, yep. the greedy guys that uh, were out buying buildings, your competitors, yeah. that were buying buildings, and instead of locking in 3% or 3.5%, <laughs> said, nah, give me an adjustable because you yeah. know I can get an adjustable for one yeah. and three quarters or two. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to take that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they move 11 times like you accurately we did said. Seven, we did seven of those, okay? okay? You know how many Starwood did? How many? 7,000. <laughs> you know what I mean? Blackstone did? 10,000 in the state of Florida. There's so much paper it's out there. a problem. There. So that's sitting with banks. Yep. Banks, life insurance companies, pension funds, sovereign funds. Yep. yep. The state of Florida, CalPERS, mm -hmm. MetLife. <laughs> yeah. It's a trillion of dollars. It is. Mm -hmm. So yep. what happens when that hits? Um, and it's coming due here in the next 18 months. And you've seen, they're throwing their keys on the desk of the bank. Uh -huh. They're saying, yours. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was 300 mil. Now it's 175. Uh -huh. Yours. Uh -huh. I'm walking away uh -huh. from this building or from this hotel or whatever it might be. Anything in the commercial real estate space. So are there risks there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there'll be tremendous opportunities for people uh, like you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the beauty of it. I mean, you keep saying there's <laughs> how risky yeah. are they and all the rest smiling. of it. I think there is a, a, quite a bit of risk, no uh, doubt about yeah. it. But it's it could be also a huge advantage for those who actually have something yeah. to be able to do something against that risk too. Buying things at pennies on the dollar. My suggestion is we become a bank. Yeah. A bank of the people. There's never been done. A real bank. A real bank. The black <laughs> community did it successfully uh, 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. yep. And then they got wiped out somehow. Like they they, I, they they undid the whole system. I mean, there's how many banks in this country are really running the country? J.P. Morgan. Uh, yeah, probably big, big Goldman. five or six. Yeah. What, what's Goldman got? Assets under management. Two trillion? <sighs> two and a half trillion? Yeah. J.P. Morgan, probably the same size or a little oh, bigger. bigger. Way bigger? Way, way bigger. Way bigger. Yeah. Schwab's what? Seven, uh, uh, four or five size. trillion? Five yeah. trillion? But that's customer. Fidelities? That's customer deposits. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah, Bank of America. Well, so Bank of America is a better. Bank example. of America, Maryland, City, Bank. City yeah. Um, Fifth Third. Yeah. Um, the five or six, seven big banks. Yeah. And then Capital a bunch of regional one. banks. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's all there is. <laughs> and they want it to be fewer than that because then it's less work for the Fed, less work for the uh -huh. people that come in and do the audits and got to check everything. And yeah. So, so 3,700 banks. Mm -hmm. There's five or six, seven of them that are that really run the <laughs> big, too big to fail. Yep. Yep. They're systemically uh, uh, um, important. They call them SIFME or something like that. Uh -huh. uh, but anyway, they're too big to fail. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then there's in the stock market. There's what? How many stocks run the S and P 500? <laughs> well, how about this? I'll throw one out to you. Yeah, yeah. My favorite yeah. stock, Apple. Yeah. So Apple has bought back uh, the equivalent of. 480 stocks in the S&P 500. They've bought back that much of their own shares. Mm -hmm. That's how big Apple is. Apple's $2.5 trillion. Um, they bought back as much as the value of 480 of the 500 stocks that are in the S&P 500. Wow. Just their own stock. Uh -huh. That's all Apple has bought is its own stock. Now, when they do that, do they borrow money to do that? Or do they, they do. their cash? They, they do. They, do they don't need to, but they do. Why? Because it's when cheap. When it was cheap. <laughs> yeah. They're think still how borrowing money? money? Apple, they have 180 million. 180 billion, billion I'm sorry, in cash. cash. In cash. Yeah. Yeah. So why would they do that? It's uh, uh, like, so it because reflects me. They can invest that money, that $180 billion, and get a bigger return than the banks were charging them to borrow. Uh, but they but borrow are they at the still, right moment. That's are they the still key. borrowing money today? I'm guessing they are not. Uh, not at these numbers. I would say uh, absolutely not. Uh -huh. They would be paying cash, you think? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so <laughs> so Apple's buying you know back, back four hundred eight. Yeah. So so what what is there? Apple, Amazon, Tesla. Nvidia. I don't know how Tesla got in the group. Yeah. Nvidia, and, Nvidia, Google, Microsoft, Microsoft, Facebook, Meta, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Microsoft. That so those there's companies. like twenty stocks that really rock the S and P five hundred. They are yeah. the S and P five hundred, right? Probably. 20. And if I took those out, where would the S and P five hundred or the exchange or the Nasdaq? We'd be, be down on the year substantially. Yep. If so why do I not just invest in seven stocks? The magnificent. A lot of seven. people do that. Yep. Most of the stocks I own, yep. um, I own less than ten. Uh -huh. And most of them are the stock, the list you said. Apple's right. the biggest. The now, risk that you run, though, yeah. when you do just those seven, think about this. So they had that great run in the first six months of the year, right? I mean, that's 
that's just the factual side of it. But since then, they've been kind of meandering around a little bit. Now they've found a little bit of footing, uh-huh. but you know, it, it's when they go down, they're going to go down just as fast, if not faster. Right. right? So if, they there, go if there was a big correction, right, those would be the ones. One, how big would it be? And two, <laughs> why would people sell the good stuff? Is it just because that's where their cap, their equity is, and they're having to cover other stuff? They so, tend to take their winners. They they uh, panic and to, they hit to, the to, winners. To, yeah. Okay, so so those could go down. Like you're just getting oh, yeah. rid of stuff to get. And liquid. they have recently. I mean, a, uh, a name like Apple. Just to clarify, it got all the way up to was it 198, John, yeah, one, or something? Just think, shy of 200. So it got up to 198, and just a week and a half ago, it was 162. Uh huh. Now all of a sudden, it's come back a little bit. So. Yeah, they hit these things. Whether it's Apple, it doesn't matter. Whether it's Microsoft or Meta or any of these names, yeah. Nvidia. Nvidia got all the way up and actually four hundred. It was actually over five. It uh-huh. got to five hundred five, but actually in the in the post market, uh-huh. it got all the way up to five thirty. So I always use that as my you know okay, this is where it is. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, this thing's down at four hundred or less. Yeah, yeah. So it, these things do move around, and people do go to those winners. Yeah, they want to sell the winners because they got to get that cash. Right, back. right. Now is the AI thing that's propelling a lot of this is that is it over do you think the ai thing is overplayed yes but it will what be here think? for what a long think? time <laughs> you think it's overplayed well how many ai stocks are there today anybody that can will put ai in there there's uh, not a company. i'm thinking about putting ai on my shit yeah right well there's not a company that reported earnings that didn't have some sort of ai hey by the way and we're working on ai and it's like right. oh boy and they buy the stock right uh, they right, immediately right, buy right. without even thinking and they don't, it doesn't even matter what they said about AI, but mm-hmm. everybody was using that as as a catalyst for their stuff. How much do you guys use it? Hmm, minimal right now. Yeah. Did you use it today at all? No. No. Okay. No. <laughs> I hear everybody talking about Mike. When's the last time you used it? I hadn't used it. I before. know you use it every day. I used though. it this morning. Yeah, yeah. you did. <laughs> every morning, I think you say you yeah. um, have but, it help you. I, I hear people talking about it, but I'm like, did you use it? <laughs> right. Have you paid for it? No, nope. I hear people that hey, I bought I bought an AI video. When's the last time you used it? Uh, been about four days. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. And there's hundreds of these companies out yep. of nowhere. Yeah. How much did that influence all the tech stocks? A lot, massively. Yeah, yeah that was that was one of the biggest catalysts I've seen. In, yep. And, and, and so what, is, what does it remind ever. you of? Does it remind you of a, another um, period of time? Yeah, um, I remember when IBM considered changing its name to International. Or no, I'm sorry, Internet Business Machines uh, instead of International 2000. Yep. Uh, like yep. Ni- right around 90s. 2000. I was just about to go to yeah, Y2K and all yeah. that whole time. Yeah. 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 That's what it feels like to it me. It does. Yeah. You know, um, there's other catalysts like that. And if people sign up <laughs> for that. Well, three, no, just give me guys free. this and we'll, we'll put a little link, a landing yeah. page below for we you guys. We can tell you another big to catalyst the- that's going to be as big or bigger than AI. How about that for a teaser? <laughs> write, write, it down, write it down for me. Right. He right wants to know what it is. I, I want to know now. I want to know now. I want to know now. Let's see. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, yeah. Big oh, Wow. Talk about a disrupt. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to even and mention And it's already okay. done some disrupting. <laughs> what, 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 what do the little guys, the everyday families out there, and I consider myself an everyday guy, right? <laughs> do I ever get a shot at the next big thing? Yeah, yeah. When? Well, right now. When? I mean, right now you could take, you know, whether it's AI, and if you think it's overhyped, we could okay, show you so about five saying, strategies to put I'm, on a I'm not spread. talking about that. I'm talking about the IPO, the next breakthrough, the next mm. insider piece. Before it's a stock, before it's a piece of paper, before it's an ETF or in a mutual fund, does the everyday family ever get, hey, grab a thousand shares of this right now? Um, they're not getting that phone call, no. They're, Will yeah. they ever get it? <laughs> uh, Unlikely. Uh-huh. Through crowdfunding. Who does get that like phone that? call? Uh, all the, the institutions. The biggest players, the biggest institutions. So let's say I got 20 or $30 million at JP Morgan. Okay. Uh-huh. I just want the audience to understand how locked down the game is. Let's say I got $10 million at JP Morgan. And I, how much do I need to even have an account there? Probably about that, yeah. I don't think you'd get a private. And I'm bank not a. I'm not a. I'm not a preferred customer. At Ten million. Am I? No. What number do You're I? You're not need? a big fish at ten. <laughs> would, would I need to be there just to put it in perspective for the audience to be a preferred customer? I don't get to meet Jamie, but but I'm a preferred customer. You might be able to see him at the ice cream shop or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How much money do I need? 
to 50. be a preferred client of J.P. Morgan. Yeah, probably 50. 50, 50 million. Yeah. Goldman, to J.P. Be, Morgan. To be an elite customer of J.P. Morgan, yeah. what do I need? You know, you're you're really talking about that century mark. You're talking about a hundred million dollars. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys a story later about that. <laughs> All right, I want to hear. I know that's not true. <laughs> okay. I, I know I know 300 million does not make you a preferred customer. Is that right? 300 didn't? <laughs> does not make you. Damn. <laughs> I'm just telling you. We got to update our, 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 our notebook. Or, or, or it was me. It was just me personally. Okay. So so now, so w- let's say I have $10 million. Is anybody at the wealth um, division there going to call me and say, Grant, we got an opportunity. We're launching this IPO. We're taking it out on the road. We want you to have it. No. Not likely. Here, here's who, a, who are they going to call? Here's a great example. Yeah. When Facebook came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pete and I had big orders in with, uh, I won't name the brokers. It, but it's couple, not, now Facebook's not Facebook yet. We don't know about it. Well, no, we know about it, it but it's not well. publicly traded. Okay, and Zuckerberg is going around doing what they call the- He's the, moved, he's moved the from Harvard to Silicon Valley. Valley. Yeah, he's yeah. moved okay. from Harvard to Silicon Valley. He's walking around with a stupid black hoodie on, yeah, yeah, yeah. on Wall Street, coming <laughs> into meetings with investment bankers. And they're looking at this joker. And they're like, oh, yeah. we know that there's so many billion people on this thing, but you know, I don't like this guy. <laughs> he doesn't seem like the guy that's going to run this thing. Anyway, Pete and I have pushed in a lot of chips to get into this thing. Uh-huh. It comes public at 28, Pete? 36, I think. 36? I, okay. I'm pretty it sure. comes public. But, but at- just so I understand, people have already made money on this Piece on of the paper. privately held Only thing. the people it's not public. For the $28. Oh, yeah. This that. is where the big the money's made, The people that right? backed him. These are pennies, right. quarters, dollar stocks. Yep. Right. Yeah. Stock went from a dollar to $10 to $20. Yeah. They probably split like it. Any, this audience is never getting a shot at that. No. Never, never. No, not those, especially there. No. Okay. Uh-huh. But okay. then Pete and John that maybe have $10 million in the this game. This is an IPO now. You're yep. waiting for the IPO. We're waiting for the IPO. They, uh, they say, John... Uh, you put in for a lot, we're going to give you a lot. And I said, a lot is how big? You know, millions of dollars worth of stock. Okay. Um, and I said, oh shit, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> why, why did they suddenly why? want to give us even more than we usually, wanted? Uh, on usually most get less. Uh, hot uh, IPOs, uh, 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 like so for instance, Starbucks or any uh, hot yeah, IPO yeah, yeah, that yeah. came out, I'd put in for as much as I could get and they'd give me 500 shares uh-huh. or a thousand shares. Like you said, the little guy, and that's with millions of dollars, yeah, is yeah, going to yeah, get yeah. almost nothing. Right, And right. they'd say, well, you know, we had to give Pete 300 shares. Man, by the way, if you don't take them got... up on this one, they're going to probably hold it against you later. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And they, they don't even want me it. to sell it. Uh-huh. So then the thing comes public at 36. They push it to 42 the first day, and then it collapses all the way down to like, yeah, 19 yeah, yeah. bucks. And they had to defend it for a and, while. And I you mean, knew yeah. that it was going to do that because if they're calling – you know, the smaller guys to say, how much do you want uh, again? You can have more. <laughs> you can have yeah. more. I've never, ever gotten that call until that stock. Yeah. I never got the call that I could have more than I so wanted. So that's what I want the audience to understand. This yeah. thing is a lockdown. You're, the chances, <clears throat> who's going to get the phone call? Is it a pension fund, a sovereign fund, MetLife? Uh, All of the above. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're talking about trillion dollar companies, Big. not billionaires. Right. Yep. <clears throat> and this is what I've learned in the last six or seven, eight years. This is not about billion dollar people. It's not about wealthy individuals. It's not about an Elon. It's about institutions that have the game on lockdown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and there's so much money. There's tri- yeah. We're talking trillions and trillions. trillions. If you're, hundreds of trillions of dollars. You're sitting on that desk and you're wearing your Brioni suit into work every day. And are you going to call on somebody that's going to give you $1,000 or $10,000? No. You're going to call on the king of Saudi Arabia and say, "Hey, dude, we got to trade for two billion dollars." Yep. Stevie you Cohen have- up at 0. 0.72. Yeah. Bobby Axelrod at X Capital. If oh yeah, sure, billions. sure. Um, <laughs> that's who you're going to call, and he's going to say, exactly. "Put me down for 50 million. Put me down for 100 million uh, yeah, on yeah, this IPO." Yeah. He's going to get it. Yeah. Flip out of it as soon as it goes double. He's going to double his money overnight. And why? Because I send you. Um, Five million dollars in commissions. So, dude, a year. What, what can we do about that to change this for the everyday person? Because there's no place. I remember watching my mom. She never got a shot. There was yeah. never a deal, an offer. There was no way for her to have an event. Right. So, unless you're an inventor, you know, right. you're going to go create the new breakthrough drug or mm-hmm. the new technology or be the the next Mark Zuckerberg. Mm-hmm. How does the everyday person actually ever? create an opportunity to create wealth? I mean, 
from our own experience, yeah. it is, you know, being in the game, being in the market. Mm-hmm. Getting um, I didn't, I mean, I started out, Grant, I worked for six months for free just to get my foot in the door and get on. That the was floor. your education. Yep. Yeah. Um, I came off the bears. Then I spent every dime I made with the bears, which wasn't that much, um, on buying a seat, a small seat. Right. That only would exist for like five more years at that time. And, and I just started trading, made a little bit, little bit, little bit, then got better and better, made bigger and bigger. But you got to be in the game. Yeah. What if, do you think you spent on your own education? Um, by working for free and so forth? Everything. Working for free, the time you put in, the books mm. you read, the, the, the people that you met yeah, with. Probably 20, the 30 mistakes that you dollars. Made. Just on the, with, not the mistakes, but no, just on that, the all that, dude. All living that four years. Paying for my, well, I only did it for six months to a year. Okay. Well, and then I figured it out. Um, how how trading really worked. Uh-huh. And I'm not saying I was the best, but I was pretty damn good at trading. Yeah. He's so that I could good. make <laughs> money every single day. I uh-huh. mean, I had so years. So what do you think you spent to do that? Well, if I take all the money, hundreds of thousands, if not millions well, that, of that, dollars. That's what it costs, man. All the yeah. mistakes. There's a commitment How about there. all the trades you didn't do because you didn't have the confidence yet? Right. Yeah. What did that cost you guys? Yeah. And you got to be, the, I think the biggest takeaway really yeah. is education, like John's talking yeah. about. Yeah. John wasn't, he, his education wasn't to become a trader. Uh-huh. It nope. wasn't in the financial world. Neither was mine. Uh-huh. I was pre-med. I planned on being an orthopedic surgeon. John t- planned on being an artist. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, but the reality is we we committed to this and then we had to educate ourselves. Yeah, we yeah. had to figure why, out why, and this why did financial you commit world. yourself. You, Oh, for me, it was about the competition. I loved it. I mean, it was uh-huh. no different than playing football. I mean, uh-huh. I was lucky enough to play football for a number of years, 86 to 92. Yeah. And I loved every second of it. Yeah. But how do you ever how do you ever replicate the feeling the and team. the adrenaline yeah. and everything about pro Winning. sports yeah. of any yeah. kind, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And so, boy, standing on that trading floor and trying to dominate other guys around you, you know, uh-huh. and getting a little physical once in a while and, <laughs> and you know, using your intellect as well as your own body and right, everything right, else. Right. I mean, you stand out, right? I mean, that's yeah. why I look like a ridiculous person. I yeah, got this yeah. thing. I got this. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it used to be, to, it started yeah. to try to intimidate people a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And if it to, works, great. If it doesn't work and they realize that I'm actually a reasonably nice guy, right, right. it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Do you think I would be a good trader? You'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah look at your discipline. What, what, Honestly, that's, that's what, it. Uh-huh. the one yeah. word that John and I always use. Uh, if you're going to have success, you better have discipline. And uh-huh. it doesn't matter if it's in the financial world or uh-huh. the real estate world, whatever it is, it's everywhere. And that's where you've got to have, if you're a doctor, you have to have the discipline not to drink the night before you're doing, doing an operation. Right, right. I mean, there's, there's all those different factors. What other, what other characteristics of a good trader? Discipline? Discipline, obviously. That, that, that means when to buy and when not to buy. Also, it's not right? even necessarily that. It's uh, cutting it, loss. It's yeah. The hardest part is uh-huh. you know it. It's hard to sell something that's a winner that you're trying to ride, right? Right, right. But the right. harder decision sometimes is, oh, you know what? Uh, maybe I'll buy a little more because I think this trade's going to work, even though I'm wrong. Uh huh. And then you keep doing that, right? Discipline tells you when you got to cut it and when you've got to, you know, maybe and trim not, not something. Deviate that's worked. from your your discipline, right? Yep. right. Uh huh. I mean, and you got to be flexible with it too. Yeah. A and little do you bit think to that some that, degree. Yeah, of course. Do you think that discipline in business? Needs to be there in life too. Always. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Every how part you of eat, it. how you work out, when you get John up. John and I yep. get up every just like you. This, yep. I mean, you've got all the discipline, so I know yep. I'm preaching yep. to the choir. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I yeah. get up every every morning around five. That's how I start my day. Uh-huh. I started doing that back in college because I played for a guy named Lou Holtz, uh-huh. who was a oh, very man. famous you college knew football you player. Knew Lou, dude? He, I'm his only two time captain ever. Dude, uh, that's amazing, man. And he's the nicest guy. He taught me a lot. We hated each other when I played for him, and uh-huh. love him, love him since the day I left. And uh, just a, a wonderful guy, but he taught us discipline. Uh-huh. He's the guy who came up with the idea that, hey, the one way I can get these guys away from partying at night is I'm going to have practice not at 3 o'clock in the afternoon like every other college in the country. We're going to practice at 5 a.m. So that we used to have to get up at 4, walk over there, get our legs taped, you do, you do all the stuff that you do, get ready, for, and practice for right, right. 5 or 6 until 8 o'clock and then go to school. Uh-huh. You know, and it, it, it's amazing how that stuck with me because to this day I wake up, I never set an alarm, Grant. I've never set an alarm in my life. I get up every single day. I look at the clock. Yeah, it's just built into you now. <laughs> yeah. So um, the qualities, the, 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 the traders, what makes, what's the three good qualities of a tr- great trader? Discipline? Yep. It would be the discipline to cut losses because 
like I said, that's the one, especially the reason floor trading is so hard is I'm standing right next to you. Like uh -huh. I said, and, I'm, and taking, I'm, I'm, also, I'm going crazy. Yeah, you're going crazy. <laughs> and and I'm seeing you making great trades. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, and oh, I'm shit, like, I got to get the I, juice. I'm ready to jump. And all of a sudden, <laughs> right. you know, Grant looks like he's going to go for this trade. And I go, so <laughs> I beat you to it maybe once. Yeah, and yeah, then you start yeah, building yeah. a confidence. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. now if it's not working, you're going to grind on me. Yeah, yeah, if my yeah. trade that I just sold uh -huh. is going in my face, now it's going higher and higher. You're going to be saying, fucking nice trade, John. That's a great one, huh? How are you going to pay your mortgage this month? How are things good? You know, until you get into my head and now I yeah. can't get you out. What, what, is there a bunch of people on a floor right oh, now? Oh, yeah. Well, they're, not they're, anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. Right, right. That's, that's, but they're, that's gone. That's why yeah. it was so tough, though. What's more difficult now is that you're sitting around at home uh -huh. and you're sitting there with eight screens around you, you know. <laughs> 10 feet high, you're sitting there, you know, working the mouse and doing all this stuff. And, you, you, and it's silent yeah. unless you turn on the TV and uh -huh. the TV's, you know, almost worthless to you. Yeah. So you're just sitting there going, God, you know, I know you're riding action. losses longer because uh -huh. you don't have me standing next to you. Because yeah, if, yeah, if yeah. I'm standing next to you, you're going to, as soon as that thing goes from 70 cents to 65 or yeah. 60 cents, you're out. You're going to say, so, 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 I know. Yeah. And then if you have you, to you clear were, your head. You violated discipline. Yeah. Okay. What's another quality? Um, I'd say. Uh, who's you know, a great trader? Who, like, like, who's somebody you guys really respect? Just think about that person and tell me what are some qualities that person has. All right. Here's one. Mark Fisher. Mm -hmm. Mark Fisher's a friend of ours. He lives right down not here. Ken Fisher, the, the, the not Fisher. Ken Fisher. Okay, no, not okay. Ken Fisher. Not Ken Fisher. Mark, why are you laughing about Ken? No, no, I'm not laughing about Ken. Ken just, these are totally different personalities. Okay, okay, got uh, it. I mean, right, 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 polar Ken, opposites. Ken's dad was an unbelievable uh, uh, investor, right? Yeah, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. Mark said, but Mark was one okay. of the biggest traders on the uh, New York Mercantile Exchange. He had discipline. Huge. The contract he's trading, natural gas, is a million dollars for a one lot. In other words, just to trade one, uh -huh. you had to have a million dollars in your account. Uh -huh. And Mark would make and lose an unbelievable fortunes mm -hmm. on the floor. In a but day. What, in a day. In, in a, a day. In a, yep. Before and lunch. Single you trade. Know, he <laughs> went from a guy that had absolutely zero when he What's got Mark to the floor. today? Even after a divorce, probably uh, <laughs> 750 Okay. Maybe a bill. Okay. Um, okay. But sorry, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> he might have cut you short, man. Yeah, he's saying, you're <laughs> underestimating me, John. You have no yeah, idea. But he would, he would say that the number one question you sh uh -huh. should ask yourself is, uh, how much can I lose? Uh -huh. He said, it's not how much you can make. He said, anything mm -hmm. I invest in, John, I always do it by how much can I lose? Uh -huh. uh, because he said, that's the number I want. Anybody can throw out an optimistic number, how much can I make? Right. But he says, how much can I lose? Yeah. That's the second most important thing, I think. Okay. And then, and then third, is there a third quality? Like, are they educating themselves? I, are they learning all the time? Are they reading, studying? I think you're always learning. And, uh -huh. and I was going to play off of that a little bit, not only the earning, the, the, the learning side of it, but I think, I think the reality is that you, you have to be in a position where you can make that quick decision. Because sometimes it comes down to that, and uh -huh. you have to make that call. And and by doing that, you've you've used the discipline, you've used all the things that John's talking about. But it, it has to it has to actually work into one solid thought, uh -huh. which is, hey, I already know everything I need to know about Apple. Right. I need to know. I mean, like John and you, I, you're for not going to go study something at this. I already point. know it. You got to know. It. I know that these guys have. This much free cash flow. I know yep. they have got yep. this. This, yep. you know, all so you've got to stay ready, not get yep. ready. So you've got to have the fundamentals in your head already, uh -huh. and that comes and with just experience and just researching the, the shit out of everything. Yeah, I mean, man. knowing everything about you know as much yeah. as you can. I think I could learn to be a trader, man, because I'm sitting here thinking, You'd okay, I have to know. I have to know everything. Trader. <laughs> I have to know everything about the company. I have to be very decisive, confident in myself, know my mistakes, know my downside know the upside. Hey, I know I'm doing the right thing. Like when I buy a piece of real estate, I know I'm doing the right thing. It's right. just when I'm yep. doing it's going to be the right thing. Right. How about this one? Yeah. On the floor, and same thing upstairs now. But there is positive. no on the floor anymore. Right. Why do you so keep going back there? Well, that's it's it's ingrained. It's in all me. part of yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when when we were on the floor, like I say, and I think yeah, it's yeah. the same now Grant upstairs. Yeah. The was it, some of the upstairs? greatest tra upstairs of meaning I'm trading from office. home okay, or I'm in an office. Got it. Got it. Got it. There may be um, a guy who was a manager or she might have been somebody running a hair salon. And if they are disciplined, uh -huh. 
uh-huh. and they apply the things that Pete and I just discussed with you, they could be one of the best traders on the floor. Yeah. Didn't matter if you're a cop. Yeah, yeah. Didn't Where, matter if you're a hairdresser, um, a backgammon player, a chess player, a mm. professional card counter from Vegas. I know guys that can count a five deck shoe. Um, they can't even go to most casinos because they know them. So right, as the right, guy comes in, right, they say, okay, Mr. Yeah. Cardone, we'll be taking you out the back door. <laughs> right, right. Um, there are guys like that. I'm sure there are gals like that too. But any background can be a winner at trading. As uh, long as they have that discipline, they learn how to do it. So the education, like you said, yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. Discipline number two. And then third is, okay, how much can I lose? Yeah. And once I hit that for the day, I'm out. Yeah. I stop. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to try to make it all back today. I'm yeah, going to yeah. be disciplined. Come back tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let me ask you guys about, <laughs> let me guys, I can't imagine you coming back tomorrow. <laughs> I buy shit and I wait 10 years. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> let me ask you about last week. No, no. Yeah, it came out that Dave Ramsey, okay, <laughs> said that, at $550, Bitcoin was trading at $550 and made a statement, if you have a million dollars, the fastest way to lose it is invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> Today, Bitcoin's at $35,000. Mm-hmm. That $1 million would be worth $65 million. Okay? Okay. What do you say to Dave Ramsey today <laughs> about crypto, Bitcoin, et cetera? Yeah. Uh, he didn't do what you just discussed is, you know everything about that building. What's the what's around that building? What are the competitors charging uh-huh. for rent? All that kind of stuff. Dave Ramsey didn't know shit about Bitcoin <laughs> uh-huh. because one of the reasons and Bitcoin, he's not the only person that no, that, that was a lot. Jamie Dimon trashed it. Took forever, but, Warren, but he immediately and Charlie, on who I admire, uh, yep. trashed it. Charlie's still trashing it, saying it's mm-hmm. garbage. Yep. It's not. Are they wrong? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's a lim- I mean, so so say, gather- say it, Dave. Charlie, Warren, and Jamie are idiots. Well, they were idiots about Bitcoin. Okay. They, they're not complete idiots, but they're idiots about Bitcoin. Uh-huh. And one of the reasons is that assets gather their value by their scarcity. Hmm. That's why Satoshi Nakamoto, the so-called founder, whether it's a person or a group, that's why they created something that could only have 21 million Bitcoins. Assets gather their value by their scarcity. Uh-huh. So. They push it out there and they say, okay, the government's printing money every day. That's yeah. why Satoshi, again, person or group, did what they did. Which is what, 20 years ago now, 18 years ago? Yeah, 2009. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. came out yeah. with uh, the idea, he or they, came out with the idea that let's create an asset that has limited, you can't yeah. make more of it yeah. unless over 50% of us agree. Right, like right, right now, right. the government's printing trillions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. They don't even, It's now it's just... It's just digits yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not even printing. It's not green ink on paper no, no, and all no, the rest. No. It's just digits that they're well, pumping it's, out. It's already a bit of a blockchain. Yeah. It's a digital well, so chain of government. He, he said that's making our money worth less. less. Not yeah, worthless, yeah, yeah, yeah. worth less. less. Yeah. And so he said, but if I create an asset that there can only be so many of these, yeah. just like there's only one, there's five Mona Lisas we know of right, right now. Right. But there's only one hanging in the Louvre that they say that is that, the Mona Lisa. The others right. were things he was working on and didn't finish yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, how much is that one asset worth? Almost a billion dollars. Okay, so why did he not get it? Because he's giving people financial advice know. on credit. He's looking for headlines. Uh, I think Dave Ramsey, more than Buffett and Munger, was Buffett looking for headlines. Munger, I think, were just more from an age perspective. It just was out of their realm. Uh-huh. I think, you know, and I don't mean that in a negative way about them yeah, at all. Yeah, I think yeah, they're, yeah. they're the best investors ever, yeah. maybe of all time. But they just didn't see the vision of it. Uh-huh. And I think that they, they they would probably, to this day, maybe admit that they've made a mistake on it. In order for you to- Are you guys maxis? Are you guys maxis? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like Bitcoin, but I do like ETH and several other okay. uh, altcoins. But- Ripple, you like Ripple? I do now, now that they've uh, got that yeah. lawsuit behind yeah, them. Yeah. I, like that the was, min- I like the miners because you get a little bit of extra oomph to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you could Some own of those miners Riot that Blockchain or Mara. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. <laughs> well, like that thing I wrote I want to get the 10X. That's, That's where you get the 10X. The, yeah. the, the side markets that where you really make a lot of money. Yeah. But uh-huh. as far as Bitcoin um, and would this affect it, uh, the fact that there's still yeah. limited supply, how many stock trading accounts are there in the United States right now? Let's say 110 million. 
Okay. Is that what there is? Yeah. Okay. Probably. Roughly. Yeah. One for every one for every three people. Three people. Yeah. Uh-huh. How many God um damn, it's crazy. software and hardware wallets are there in the United States right now? One for every ten thousand people or something? Yeah. Like probably. Yeah, in other words, because yeah, you're saying when they gave you the Bitcoin, it's not like they just handed it to you. They could hand you a jump drive uh-huh. and give you a Bitcoin on a jump drive, uh-huh. which is more or less like a Tracer and some of the other uh, popular I hardware don't, I don't wallets and things. Man. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> for that, they can hand it to you like that. Yeah. But other than that, most people, um, if one out of three people has a stock trading account, can you imagine that they all of a sudden have access to Bitcoin now and they don't have, it's going to be mm-hmm. a BlackRock, mm-hmm. a multi-trillion dollar company, mm-hmm. and they don't have to worry about how do I hold this thing? Am I going to have Stan- Sam Bankman Freed steal it from me yeah, yeah, or whatever? Yeah. Um, how it's many years should Sam get? Life. Hmm. life. Should, no parole. No. I mean, uh, it was worse where, where than... You no, I'm with him. I, I, it's it's unbelievable what he yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you yeah, think, I think, do, it's, do, I think do it's you think he did it with intent to hurt people or, or no. just, stupid. just Stupidity, caught up in it? Lazy, yeah. stupid. Yeah. Greedy, stupid. Yeah. No yeah. discipline. Yeah. Like so you we think he, about. Yeah. <laughs> he? You think he should spend the rest of his life in jail, and never see the light of day? He didn't even ever know what they were investing in. How yeah. about that? When yeah. they were talking to him about, you know, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's so just, make an example. Yeah. Um, let's back to Warren now. Okay. Okay. Why does Warren Buffett <laughs> tell people to invest in ETFs and mutual funds when he has never done that himself? He also is the largest option trader in the world, but tells people that they're uh, weapons, weapons of mass destruction. Why, Why does he do that? <laughs> Why does he do that, dude? Like, because when I see the old man, I'm like, God, man, he's so believable, so soft-spoken, got his Coca-Cola with him, got his C's candy sitting on the thing. I'm Dairy like, fuck, Queen I do Blizzard. that shit every day. I'm pitching shit every day. But when Warren does it, everybody's like, I love him so much. But I, I've stumped him a couple of times. Yeah. I'll tell you one yeah, time. Yeah, tell did. me. So he was really behind. And mad this. respect for him, by the way. I've yeah. seen everything he's he done, too. every interview. I've yep. read his book, everything. Like We had him on the network, CNBC, uh-huh. where Pete and I used to work. We had him on there, and uh, he had just purchased um, something from the Pritzker family, um, and it was called Marmon Industries. Um, and he was a big fan of the uh, Obamacare. And he was a big fan of it because he didn't have that many employees because Obamacare costs employers a fortune. Right, right. Which we were, which you are, Uh cost them a fortune. And it's not really better than what we had before. But anyway, off the soapbox and onto this. So he buys Marmon Industries from the Pritzkers. And Marmon Industries is what? It's like two or three, I think it's 270,000 employees that do every kind of business in the United States. It's not the Hyatt Hotels. Okay. That's I've never Pritzker's heard of them. Yeah. Nobody's heard of them. Okay. Really, nobody had heard of them. But when the Pritzkers wanted to break up their fortune and start doling it out, uh-huh. um, they needed a buyer. So they went to Warren. A lot of people do that. Uh-huh. The guys with uh, NetJets went to Warren. Uh-huh. You know, anybody that's got something big to sell goes to Warren. Uh-huh. So anyway, um, he uh, he's on the show with us and we're talking about this big purchase and He's all, you know, aw shucks and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, sir, I have one question for you. You've always been a big supporter of the Obamacare, um, Medicare for all sort of thing. Um, And it's quite expensive for employers. And he said, well, but that's what should be done, John. You know, you got to sometimes focus on what should be done. And I said, okay, well, uh, (laughs) you just took on 270,000 employees. So now you're going to be part of it, too. It's not just you investing and having, you know, right, right. 20, 30 people in Omaha. Now it's all of a sudden you have 270,000 employees. They said, how's that shaping up for you? Uh-huh. Did that go into your calculus? And he sat at the back and he was like, ah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. When you <laughs> can kind of see the wheels yeah, turning. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, like, yeah. oh, this is going to hurt me too. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, and it should. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah, no, I think yeah. he's brilliant. He's sitting on $157 billion. Right. Mm-hmm. In cash right now, more than he's Most ever. ever. Yep. Okay, he sold a bunch of stuff in the last nine months. Yep. Why is he selling right now? What does he know that we don't? I think he knows what you know. What you said about commercial real estate—that uh-huh. that is, I mean, when uh, mortgages blew up and people had homes taken away in 07, 08, 09, that was a big problem. 
um, because it pushed people out on the street. This one won't put people out on the street, but it will hurt the banks heavy, uh -huh. Uh -huh. heavy when these guys are throwing the keys across the desk and saying, you know what? Yeah, I gave you 30% down or whatever it was, but you can have the rest of this piece of, you know yeah, what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I can't, I can't make the numbers work anymore. Yeah. Not at 8%. You're either going to But this, this, this cycle, me. Yeah, this cycle will not be about um, strippers and pizza delivery men turning back the keys. This right. is going to be about the biggest institutions in the world saying, yep. you got to either rework the loan you got to push it down. Like, why wouldn't they just push this debt problem down the road? They will. Or will the Fed drop interest rates to solve the problem? Both. If they go back to three, mm -hmm. problem is solved. Yep. Yeah. It would be. And Pete and I just did a, a show where um, up in uh, Orlando where we talked about, will the Fed drive us into a recession? Uh -huh. And I think mm -hmm. the answer is yes, if they stay as aggressive as they've stayed with moving these rates up so quickly. Now, we've had... Two pauses in a row. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that continues. But did you have, did you guys both uh, did you bet there would be a pause or did we you think knew that, it was? Yeah. You did. Huh? You yeah. Knew. There's a way to know. How, okay. <laughs> so do, do they raise again to the end of the year? Uh, they're good. They're, right now it's an 82 percent chance that in December they pause again. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's actual there's an actual place you can go uh -huh. on the CME site, Chicago Mercantile Exchange site, okay. that tells you. It's called the Fed Tool, and uh -huh. it gives you the percentages of exactly what, with all the numbers put in how, there. How often are they right? About 100%. <laughs> okay. Pretty damn near up. Because it's everybody that's trading bonds. Everybody that's trading uh -huh. bonds would have to be surprised yeah. right. by their now, move. Now, even if they don't raise, okay, mm -hmm. and then we'll wrap up here, uh, but, but even if they don't raise... Mm -hmm. If there's nobody that wants to buy a three-year, five-year, seven-year, or ten-year bond, even when they go down, won't they still go? Even when the Fed goes down, if there's no buyers for these ten-year, five-year, seven years, won't they still go up? Um, if there are, like you said, it's uh, supply and demand, right? So if you have the supply, which is ever rising because we're borrowing more and more money because right. of the debt. I have more uh, bonds to sell, right? Yep, mm -hmm. I've got more bonds to sell. So that's the supply. So, so. If the demand drops off, price has to the, the go down. The Fed is no longer in control. Right. The Fed loses control. That's, that's and the China's worst. Because the Saudi, Saudi's <laughs> like, yeah, we don't want your bonds. So, But you get them to 8% or 9% or 10%, we'll buy them. Yeah. Now, what would correct that, I think, I'm just asking questions, mm -hmm. is if... What? No, I'm just waiting. <laughs> why would China buy? Why would China buy our bonds right now? Or why would Russia buy them? Why, because we need that. We they need, won't. You need that volume. Yeah, but they if won't. there was and a China's major war, yeah. if there was a world war, and every country now is at risk. Okay, I can't imagine. Uh, you know, w w wouldn't money start moving back to America because we're still the safest, safest, mm -hmm. yeah, and because we've got and these that, two and great oceans. That volume on would then side. drop the rate again, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. True, but if so, China, don't you need both of those? You need the the Fed to drop, and you need buyers, right? right. So if China invaded Taiwan, uh -huh. rates have to go through the roof. Why? If China, China invades Taiwan, Taiwan. because China, uh, number one, it's going to be a, a, a an ugly war, but. China would also not purchase a single bond. Uh -huh. Why would they give us money? Because they're, they want to hurt us uh -huh. if they're going against us in a war. Uh -huh. So they're going to so, pull back. Yeah, they're going to pull back. And then yeah. what? Is but, Japan going to... But China can't do that. China can't do that. China China depends too much on America, man, for, for, for us to buy stuff. I agree with right? that. And that's why I don't think they invade Taiwan. I think it's posturing. Yeah. But, um, you know, depending what happens with this election... Um, you've already got, you know, just this week, uh, Trump's leading in all but yep, one battleground yep. state. Okay, who, right now. who wins the election? You you open the door. So, <laughs> does, does Trump get convicted on any count no. in any of the four states? No, zero. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's probably right. Probably none. Probably he gets not no gonna. convictions. Right. How about in the real estate when the judge said Mar-a-Lago's worth eighteen mil? And it's like, are you kidding me? Dude, that's you a can't that's a buy dollar. a tent, a tent <laughs> that, 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 on that piece of land yeah. for 18 mil. Yeah, he could sell that tomorrow for $500 yep. million. Dollars. Yep. Um, and that's coming from a guy who knows real estate. What, yeah. I might be going to New York actually to, 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 to do something regarding that whole thing. Hey. I just got a call yesterday. That's a bang. Yeah, bang. Okay. Bang. Okay. okay. So, He's banging now. So, so, so um, man, it's great having you guys here. Oh, um, so cool. 
Now, now, let me say, there was one more question I wanted to ask you guys, though, man. It was an important question. It better be good, right? How low can the S&P 500 go? If there was an event. Ooh. What's it at today? 40, 300? Somewhere yeah. Somewhere close to that. Yeah. Um, how low could it go? If there were an event, and I assume we're talking yeah, about bad events. You event. write your number down. You write your number down. <laughs> I want to see how close you guys are. Okay. I want to see. And I'm, I'm, it's how, how far it can get I'm down. telling you, um, uh, uh, you know, 9-11 event, 9-11 event. Uh, so a terror attack World in War our III, country. Terror attack here, World War III. Something unexpected. Nobody's thought about. Another COVID. Another event. Major event. How low mm -hmm. could it go? Okay. Oh, you got I, you gave me a range. I probably am too high. He's got way more guts. I just gave one number. <laughs> yeah, I gave him a range. He gave him like ten. Yeah. I okay. gave him zero it's to five thousand. <laughs> yeah, so so that's not that's not much We're of a correction. That's not much of a correction. That's that's seven hundred points. So he put in thirty four to thirty seven hundred. Yeah, he put in thirty six hundred. So we're ballparking each other, I guess. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So <laughs> I mean, that when when was it at thirty six hundred last? Two not, years ago? Not terribly long ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's... Under two years ago? I know more about stocks than you guys you, thought no, I did. No, you don't. Uh, I got a little... Oh, we knew you knew a lot about stocks. Are yeah. What me? is it? It's less than 20%. It's 15% correction. Mm -hmm. That's not even like... It's not even a major event. Why, That's, dude? Why did... The, I don't understand how this thing keeps holding up. We have trillions like... In debt. The debt is the biggest issue. 33 trillion in debt. Yeah. That's not the corporate debt. Like, that's not... That's not all the debt there is in the world. Okay. No. And every other country has the same problem. Yep. We're not the only people with no, a debt. Problem. Europe goes down faster than we do. Yeah. Um, if we have an event here, right. Europe goes down even faster than us. Yeah. They probably go down 20, 25%. Yeah. Do, Again, do, not which, in a day, which but brings over time. Money maybe here. A look over here. Right. Money here. That's exactly yeah, right. It brings money here. Yes. Okay. So now, okay. That's I'll, why that number's 36. Okay. <laughs> because the rest of the world falls too. Yep. Yeah. Because and we have event. the most liquid markets in the world too. Uh -huh. By far. And liquidity. Yeah. Uh -huh. One thing Pete and I learned when we were trading because we had to make markets. Me, so me, he, you got buyers and trade, but sellers yep. on both you have sides. To, yeah, and you, you got to have that activity and an offer. to create value. Yep. 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 Yeah. So we have Still to have a bid and an offer. Canada. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. Well, activity. It's yep. just like that. In or the Puerto stock Rico, market. by the way. Almost no idea. He gave me a shot on the Puerto Rico side. He knows I'm too too heavy in Puerto Rico real estate. Yeah. Um, so if uh, we had a stock like Biogen, uh, which was one of Pete's stocks, and Micron and AOL and all that, the worst thing that can happen isn't the market goes down uh -huh. uh, and you're caught long. The worst thing is the market goes down, you're caught long, and there's no liquidity and you can't get out. Uh -huh. So that's what happened to the market in Meaning there's no traders, there's no there's buyers. Nothing there. There's right. no, it's yeah. just going to keep dropping and somebody so, will buy it at some price. At right? some point. So if you yeah. remember, see, you know, but you need liquidity. You yeah. got to have the see, liquidity. See, this is why I love real estate, right? Because you, you just can't trade. I don't want the liquidity. Right. Yeah. I actually don't want you want people to hold. I, I don't you want, want people to do what Buffett always says. Yeah. Which man. is he says you should just buy and hold. Yeah. Buy and hold. Yeah. You don't want to dump yeah. out of it. Yeah. You know, every once in a while he does. We already talked about yeah. Exxon and things yeah. like that that didn't work out for him. But he went but and bought Oxy. He loaded yeah. up on Oxy. I don't yeah. know why he bought what he knows about yeah. Oxy. But he loaded up. He loves man. it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It uh, hasn't worked yet either. No. <laughs> US dollar. Does the US dollar ever go away? Last question I'm asking you guys. I've already kept you here long enough. I can't imagine it does, no. to be honest with you. No. Okay, so do all they do a digital shit, dollar as all well? All these headlines that you see. Yeah, okay, let's go to that. All mm -hmm. these headlines I see about uh, Russia and Saudi are doing a deal or China and Russia are doing a deal and they're trading in a, a Remy or a Rwan or a, whatever mm -hmm. it is, whatever they call their dollars and they're doing it it's the first time ever. I'm like, that's not the first time ever. Y'all did this stuff in, in the 1990s, in two, early 2000. You keep saying you're going to do it. You do it once or twice. It never works. Mm -hmm. Or am I wrong on that? Nope. You're right. And the reason this is not is, the first time they've attempted to trade in something other right. than, what is it, petrodollars. Mm -hmm. It's the same reason you don't buy real estate in Canada. Because um, they just Russia do and China guys. in particular, uh -huh. and Saudi... And as well as part of that triumvirate or whatever, yeah. um, they have restrictive currencies. Ours is free trading, uh -huh. meaning people can buy it and sell it, move it out of the country, do whatever they want with it. China, you can't move that money. Out yeah, of the which country. is what? That's a yuan, right? Yeah, that's uh, the, and then the Russians the yuan, are ruble. Ruble. Okay. And I forget. And Saudi. who wants rubles? I mean, how many countries <laughs> want to collect rubles? <laughs> right. 
Now, if they back it all with gold, like they could do, uh-huh. like we used to do, uh-huh. that would be a different story. But they're oh, all yeah. really restricted. Now, now, now you're opening a whole other category. Mm. All right, yeah. <laughs> Peter Schiff and his gold bullshit. <laughs> Your boyfriend, he neighbor. Loves it, man. My he, neighbor. He used to live up north of me, and then he moved down with Puerto Rico with John. So we like, can't get rid of the guy. I mean, goddamn, the guy never stops talking about gold and silver. Like, yeah. mm, nobody in 65 years. How old are you guys? I'm 66. 59. Okay. Has anyone ever offered you a piece of gold for anything in yeah. your entire lifetime? Never. Just like you with the Bitcoin. They yeah. paid me in gold coins. Okay. But I mean, but one, how many I didn't, times have, how many I didn't times, have the, how many the 20X that you, you have. might not make a deal in gold very often, no, probably. And you don't even know where that gold is right now. <laughs> it's in my safe. Okay. Yeah. All right. As far as I know. Yeah. But but I'm saying I don't understand it. Why? Why It's scarce, by the way. Yeah. It has no value to me at all. Zero. Right. Uh, but my brother not- had a bunch of gold. My brother had a bunch of gold. And when he went to sell it, guess what? They said, before you give, send it to us, we have, first of all, we have to be sure it's real gold. Mm-hmm. They had to put it through some kind of test. Yep. He <laughs> bought it from them. Right. <laughs> but now they got to put it through another test. Even though he bought it from them. To validate. And they could only take so much at one time. I'm like, I don't understand this. You've been, they, it comes out of the ground. You put it back in the ground. And you could always, it's not limited though. It never pays you any money. Right. It, you have to pay to store it for yeah, the most part, exactly. unless you've got a big safe. Um, the uh, uh, the fact that people that uh, trade gold or Is invest, Peter Schiff a kook? That's what I want to know. <laughs> um, well, you live with I, him. I'll take it to uh, the uh, Dave Ramsey thing. He's just looking for headlines. Okay. Uh, both of them were looking for headlines. Peter loves to slam on Bitcoin yeah. and pump up gold. He says the Why? banks are going to go to hell. The U.S. dollar is going to disappear. The nope. world's going to go to That gets like... you on TV when you say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all it does. And it gets all the gold companies to pay you. Let's build a company together for the Let's people. Okay. Let's okay. If you guys would be interested, let me know in the comments. Okay. Um, we're going to build a bank. We're going to disrupt the banking system. <laughs> Why not, dude? Love it. Banking, Makes trading, crypto's gonna education. Crypto is going to disrupt it. Yep, yep. People have lost faith and confidence in the banking system. I believe they have. Yep, they, I think most people cannot, as you guys stated today, can't invest in stocks without learning a whole bunch. And better, if they're gonna, yep. They better learn a whole bunch. Yep. They better get disciplined. Now, do you guys have any kind of like accountability groups or any kind of like holding people accountable and keeping help, helping them build their discipline like oh, a yeah. team does? We, we yep. certainly do. We, we talk about it all the time. And we have these chats that we go back uh-huh. and forth with people all the time about that. And okay. usually slapping them on the back and letting them know, hey, that was a great decision. Yeah. That was discipline. Don't yeah. worry about it. Don't look at it again. Yeah. You already sold it. You yeah. sold everything you had. Yeah. Don't look at it for a little yeah. while. Yeah, you know. just getting that support that you get from being on a team. Yep. So you guys leave. Uh, there'll be a landing page my team will put up, and I'll connect you with their three by three. Three and three. Three yeah, and three. three. I'll, I'll connect you with it. <laughs> and uh, appreciate you being here today. Appreciate you guys Thank giving you, me man. so much time, okay? Thank appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you Thank you, Greg. Yeah. You're the man. It's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Huh?